Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem has provided me a wonderful gift. The opportunity to build a complete set of ninja weapons. My goal is to create Nunchuck, Sai, Katana, and a bow staff that look as accurate to the movie as possible, including their effectiveness against watermelons. But before we start destroying fruit, we need to build these props. So let's dive into the build. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles originated in comic books published in 1984. Their popularity has launched multiple TV series, numerous toy lines, and several movies. And now, Mutant Mayhem is bringing our favorite Ninja Turtles back to the big screen. This movie's amazing new animation style makes this build both challenging and extremely exciting. For new fans, four Turtle Brothers make up this ninja team. They include Leonardo, who uses two katana swords, Raphael, who uses two parrying weapons called Sai, Michelangelo, who uses two pairs of nunchucks, and Donatello, who uses a bow staff. Since most of these weapons are used in pairs, and we want to test them out on live targets, we need to make multiple copies of each. To do that, I'll start by hand carving master copies of these weapons, which we will then scan, make 3D models, and then print those out so we can assemble and paint several copies of each weapon. Let's take a deeper dive into how these were made. The teaser trailer offered a very good look at each of the character's weapons. As always, I print out enlarged screenshots to provide references for my build, and if I can get those nearly one-to-one -one scale, it makes crafting the pieces even easier. For all but the staff, I decided to use pink insulation foam to craft the main parts of the weapons. This material is rigid enough to hold its shape, but extremely easy to cut and sand. It's far too brittle to use for our final material, but it will work great to get us awesome 3D scans that we can use to build our final models. We'll start with the nunchuck fabrication. The two handles are almost identical, so we only need to build one of these, and then we'll use that model for all four handles, two per nunchuck. From the reference screen grabs, they definitely appear to be asymmetrical and very organic or handcrafted. I started my construction of this handle by cutting out the rough shapes of the handle pieces, then filing and sanding each of the pieces to make them match the reference picks. I then glued the individual pieces together using CA glue to ensure a strong hold for the 3D model scan. As I started to glue the pieces, I used a level to ensure that the top and the bottom of the handles were aligned correctly. Each of the links I fabricated out of pink foam and at a very increased scale. That makes it much easier to build. To do that, I first blew up my reference frames from the trailer to the same scale as what I wanted to build. I then cut out the rough shapes of the links with my bandsaw and the inside of the links with an X-Acto knife. To get the angled sides of the links, I first belt sanded the outside edges, then hand filed the inside edges to get the shapes I wanted. I also added some battle damage to match the reference photos, and finally I hit the whole thing with 200, 400, and 600 grit sandpaper to get the final pieces as smooth as possible. We have fabricated three oversized links that we're going to use to make a chain. We used references from screen grabs that I blew up very large. These particular links need to be 3D scanned and then in a 3D modeling program shrunk down to this size. This is the final print size that we want for our links. There are nine links, so we'll need three of each of the pieces that we've created. We'll arrange them kind of randomly along that, pre-link them, print the entire thing out, and then we'll attach it to our handles. I also built a loop piece for the top of the handle, which connects the chain to the handles. I kept this separate from both the handle and the chain so it could be easier to assemble the final printed and painted pieces. After building all the pink foam parts, I had them all 3D scanned. This process creates a 3D model of the sculpts I built. The hand scanner actually projects a tight grid onto the shape, with multiple cameras reading and evaluating to determine the shape of the object it's looking at. The software then interprets this data and builds a 3D model. After we have the 3D scans, we have a bit of modeling work to do. First, we bring the high-res 3D models into a free program called Mesh Mixer. There, we can close any gaps or seams in the model and clean up any rough places from the scanning. Then, we bring those models into Blender, another free modeling program. In Blender, we can use their Decimate tool to reduce the poly count to something manageable for our final manipulation. Again, I use Tinkercad for the final assembly 
and finishing touches to my 3D modeling process. Examples of the final assembly work would be our resizing of those nunchuck links, creating inset spaces in the handle for our connector loop that attaches the chain to the handle, and finally, the assembly of the chain itself. In this case, I build into the model some support pieces that will allow the chain links to stay rigid, with each link separated in a way that makes painting it easier. Once the chain is painted, I can simply snip out those spacer pieces before assembling the weapon. With the nunchuck models in hand, or on file, it's off to the printers. As always, my good friend Chris Dotson helped me out with all the 3D printing and laser cutting. His collection of 3D printers can output all of the pieces we need in a fraction of the time that it would take me to print them on my desktop version. For the nunchuck pieces, Chris used a pair of Saturn II resin printers. It took about six hours to print each of the four handles and two hours for each of the chains. Once each of the handles were printed, I sand them and color matched them to reference photos. I opted for two different colors of orange so they look the most like the reference frames we had. Once we have the base color on these guys, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of distressing and shadowing on the pieces and then put them together. Finally, I had to add stickers, the same ones that Michelangelo used on his nunchucks. To create these, I had to leverage the few rough reference frames I had to build out the graphics that look similar to the on-screen props. I then printed them on glossy paper, cut them out, and glued them onto the handles. Between the complexity of the 3D models necessary, the sticker design work, and the overall number of pieces, the nunchucks were easily the hardest weapons to build. Next up is the Sai. These are an artistic version of the famous pairing weapon. They have a very distinct main blade in addition to its two prongs. In martial combat, the design of this weapon allows it to block and capture an opponent's weapon. Beyond the blade, I have another handle to build too. Both the blade and the handle are all crafted out of a block of pink insulation foam. The same plan is to scan these and make 3D models out of my master copy. For the blade itself, this took a lot of sanding to get it into the organic shape of the blades and the prongs. Again, I alternated between a belt sander and a hand file to find the final shape. Then I sanded all the surfaces again with 200, 400, and 600 grit paper to ensure the smoothest possible surface. Once I got past the cartoonish proportions of the blade and the handle together, it was off to 3D scan and model the blades before painting them. For the side blades, we used a Neptune Max printer. This is a filament printer, and we opted to use PETG filament on these pieces. This was the longest print at eight hours per blade. In order to get a high gloss chrome finish on pieces like the chain and the blades, we're going to start by smoothing the model, sanding it and priming it until you've got a decent shape with smooth sides. And then we're going to paint that a gloss black. And this is what we will go ahead and paint our final chrome paint onto. After the pieces were printed, I primed and painted them. To give them more stability, I added a metal rod through the center of the blade and the handle. This will keep the pieces together, but it'll also give the final piece a nice weighty feel. The bow staff is the weapon we only need one of, so I'm going to build this as a one-off construction. And as this weapon needs to look like it's made of wood, I figured it'd be easiest to just build this as a woodworking project. The base of this will be a six-foot curtain rod that I'll cut in half and then construct a connection system similar to what pool cues use. I'll need to craft the hand grip section, and that will take individual blocks that'll slide onto the staff. Once we have the main hold drilled through the block of wood. Now we need to decide what shape this particular hand grip section is going to be. Since each of these is different, we can make them up almost freehand. They'll have to look different from each other anyway. So now that we have that shape, we'll go ahead and cut this out, sand it, and detail it. In some of the reference photos, 
we can see holes in the hand grip part of the design of the woodwork there so we're going to do the same thing for our sections first we're going to start by punching a hole in the center of one of the sides that's pretty clean it does not have to be centered because they're all over the place in the reference photos but i'm going to clean it up a little bit with our dremel So now that we have our new hand grip section, we'll take one side of our bow staff, slide this on, and position it so it's slightly off from the rest of the pieces, matching our reference photos. And then we'll continue to do that for two more sections here, and then we'll do five on the other side. They'll join in the middle and we'll be done with our hand grip. To make it easier to store, I've sliced the bow staff in two and then carved out a space at the end, buried a bolt and a nut, epoxied those in, and then these two halves will simply screw together. After completing the hand grips, I'll also need to carve out the lettering Donnie has on the staff. And finally, I'll need to dremel some details into the end of the staff to make it match the reference footage. Once the construction is finished, the staff will need to be painted and detailed. Finally, we move on to the katana. With two different base materials being used, I started with the 3D printed handles. I modeled these just like I did the nunchuck handles. I also crafted two katana guards, which Leo had etched with the words rules and consequences. After scanning and printing these pieces, I painted them, matching the reference footage, and detailed both the guard and the handles. For the guards, I spent some extra time doing a little metallic paint on the edges to make them look like the paint is chipped. For the katana blades, I tested both oak and poplar wood. Oak is a harder wood, but poplar is easier to sand smooth for props. I had the sword blade shapes laser cut into 1 4 inch panels of wood, and the blade groove laser etched into one side. After getting the blades laser cut, I had to finish cutting them out with my bandsaw, and then using my belt sander, I put a nice cutting edge on each. Finally, I sanded all the surfaces with multiple grit sandpaper to get a very smooth surface to paint. With all of my props, I start the paint process with a good filler primer. Putting this on in light, multiple coats makes for the best sandable surface possible. After getting a smooth prime surface, I painted the blades chrome and fit them to the handles. Now that we have these created, we have another important task. Field test the weapons. Since our entire Regal marketing department is looking forward to seeing these weapons in action, I took the katana swords and a bunch of watermelon to work with me to test them out together. We're here at Regal's home office to test out our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle weapons. I brought our props. I've also built a custom 10 foot watermelon fishing pole that we're gonna go ahead and use to hang our watermelon on to do these tests. I've asked my coworkers and friends, Larry and Jeff, to hold the pole for me so I can go ahead and slice some fruit. Let's test these out. All right, you guys got it. Lift it up just a bit. So that snapped our wooden blade in half when we went ahead and tried it against the watermelon. So we're gonna try it one more time to see if this might be just this one particular blade that was defective. Take two, watermelon against my wooden prop. All right, chip the blade, we'll try it again. I would say that the wooden blade does not work to cut the watermelon. Now, luckily, while we have this hanging here, 
I have an upgraded prop I built because I really do want to slice these watermelons. So we're going to go ahead and get out my steel blade version of the prop and try it on this watermelon. All right, we're going to try the steel blade against the watermelon here. Take one. Try it one more time. All right, so we've got a second watermelon we're going to test against the steel blade of the katana. <laughs> Are you in the splash zone? <laughs> Did you actually get splashed? Yeah, man. That is awesome. So we've tested out the steel blade and know it can cut through the watermelon. Now in the trailer, we want to replicate the scene where they're throwing the watermelon and we're slicing it midair. Three, two, one. <laughs> Just like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you can't do this alone. So I've got to let my friends that have helped me out take a swing at their own watermelon with the katana blade. What a fun build. My inner 13 year old is absolutely thrilled with getting to build, test, and share these movie props with fans. Make sure that you gather your brother at arms and catch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem at Regal Theaters August 2nd. And if you want to craft your own set of these props, links to download the 3D models featured in this video can be found in the video description. Don't forget to like and share the video and comment below on what movie props I should build next. I'll see you at the movies. You want the watermelon? All right, here you go. You got it? You might come out of this one. I'm short. You got it? Okay. Sensation I haven't felt before. Watermelon juice rolling into my armpit.